The Dougie Saga. Grab a chair. Roll on up. Oh my God, did you just see that? Did you just see that Dougie dog go like L? Why? Because he's got freedom. I'm deciding when I give him freedom. Oh my God, he's with Rafa, the troublemaker. Oh, and he's with Wiz as well. He, will he have the common influence, Wiz, or will Rafa take him for a wild day out? We'll have to see, won't we? Now, Rafa doesn't need any collar anymore. And when I say he doesn't need an e-collar anymore, he doesn't run with an e-collar on because he listens, because we've conditioned him over a year to condition the dog. We're not rushed. We're not, we are not want a quick fix. We want a permanent fix. So what we do, we get into the mindset of the dogs. And Dougie is exactly the same. Does that look like a dog that's been beaten? Does that look like a dog that's that's been suppressed on an e-collar to the point he's scared to leave my side? All these idiots out there. Roll on up. Roll on up. Step right on up. Come into the sideshow. Stop listening to crap out there. What idiots tell you. Look at, look at Dougie. Look. Enjoying life. And that's what it's about everybody. It's about having freedom. Giving these dogs the freedom to roam. When you want them to. But having the control when you need it. This is the really important thing. And I'm tapping into using my dogs, where some people say you never use other dogs to teach a dog. A load of rubbish. Old wives' tales. Chris Upton says it the way it is. If you've got understanding of running a pack or a group of dogs, whatever they want to call it, then you can use that pack to show that dog what you want it to do. Now, I know that Rafa will open up and push boundaries a little bit. And if I correct Rafa... For not listening to me and that's very seldom these days he my voice command alone can control him in this environment and this environment is not on a shoot with thousands of birds but this is an environment where you'll come across things you'll come across rabbits you'll come across pheasants you'll come across people what we're doing we're far from the madding crowd me and sue have taken these dogs out for this a free run but at the end of the session we give them some training, but in the session where they're getting the free run, they're still going through training because one minute I'm calling him back on a whistle, then I'm tapping him on the e-collar. Can you tell me when the e-collar is put on on this dog on this video? Or can you tell me when I use the whistle? What's he doing down the end there? He's winded people on the beach. There's a small beach down there. I was going to take him for a swim, let him have a swim down there. But there was people down there with dogs and we don't want to go near people and dogs. We want to stay far from the madding crowd. Why? Because we condition him. Now he could easy run down there and I get him back easy with an e-collar. But I don't want him to go down there. But they're telling me there's people down there and they're wanting to go down on the beach because they know it's great fun in the water. But they don't go down on the beach unless I say they're allowed down on the beach. It's as simple as that. We live in a fantastic part of the country. And I've got some fantastic farm people that let me use their ground. And at the end of the day, we're keeping rabbits off the cover crops with these dogs. We're not hurting anything. And we're just, I do a service for the farmer and the farmer lets me train my dogs on his fields. And I really appreciate that. That's really nice of him. This time of year, the cover is growing like crazy. There's at certain places you can go and there's certain places you can't go. And yet two months ago, you could have gone there and you could have trained there. And the idea is, I need to get out with these dogs to train them. Does Dougie look like a dog that's been under pressure and had to cope with discipline? And he has had discipline, but he's had the right level of discipline, not too much of it. But what we're doing, we're, we're changing the mindset of the dog we're saying to him, there's nothing wrong with having fun and coming out with me. I want him to think I am the best thing since sliced bread. But I'm also not a person to be pushed. He will not get away. Look, Rafa's telling me, look, there's people down there, Dad. Can we go down there, Dad? No, he doesn't, does he? He would have. He would have 12 months. He'd be gone. He'd be on the beach with him, loving it. Because he loves the water. 
You've seen him in the water. He has become a pleasure to take out. He is a cheeky character, and that's his nature. Wiz never really gives you any bother at all. Rafa wants to push boundaries. It's just the nature of the beast. But in another year, Rafa will not push boundaries in the same way because he knows the boundaries. And that's exactly what we want. He's still a young dog, but he's having fun and he's not got an e-collar on. And it's all right saying about e-collar training and e-collar conditioning and when you should have the e-collar on, when you shouldn't have the e-collar on. Fine, lovely. I'm all for it. I'm all for listening. But guess what? I need, I need to be able to take these collars off. Because if I'm having to keep an e-collar on a dog all the time that I've trained, I've not trained it. It's as simple as that. What I'm doing is I'm enforcing that behaviour with the e-collar that they've already learnt. And when I ask the dog to come back, he's got to come back. And the reason I've done a voiceover on this video is because I want you to realise and I want you to visually watch it and tell me when I'm using the e-collar on the dog or when I'm using the verbal cue. Because I use the verbal cue, I use the whistle... And I use the e-collar at certain times. Can you see, if I told you one of these dogs has got an e-collar on, there she is, that little beauty, look, that's my darling wife, look, coming up with me, look, behind, look, she's, she, she's just so subservient, she just follows me behind where she should be, where she should be. Now, people are going to be offended by that because they're going to think, he means that, he doesn't want a woman in front of him, he wants a woman behind him. Get a life, get a freaking life. I'm joking. I'd walk hand in hand with her if she wanted to with me, but I know she doesn't. She wants her own space. We're self-isolating. So as you can see, look, I'm giving him freedom. I'm saying to him, there's nothing wrong with going away from me. But when you are away from me and I want you back, you come back. You come back. I'm reading a dog all the time. I'm multitasking. I'm watching all three dogs. Even though Wiz is fully trained, I'm watching Wiz. He tells me something. Rafa tells me something, and Dougie tells me something. It was a hot, hot day, but the breeze, look at the breeze, look, down on the hill. I could turn the camera away from Sue as fast as possible, though, because she's camera shy. Keep telling you, secret Sue is camera shy. So, isn't it nice you can go out and not be screaming and shouting at dogs? And look, the collar upside down. I'm just showing you something. Did I press it or did I not press it? You can't tell me because you can't hear the audio. And yet I'll put the audio on and then you'll know whether I'm doing it because I'm telling you. But that's the difference between using the collar, knowing how to use the collar and listening to people that you've seen them with their dogs and that you've appreciated what they've said and you've listened to them. If you don't listen to people, how do you know these things work or they don't work? How do you know that discipline works? If you've never tried it or you've never seen it done. If someone keeps telling you discipline doesn't work, it just frightens the dog. You can't tell by looking at these three dogs which dog has got the e-collar on. Because I haven't said, I've just said the dog's names. So you might be thinking, which one's the freaking dog with the e-collar on? Now you guys who watch my videos will know who's got the e-collar on. And that's the difference. I've just named three dogs. I haven't said which spaniel has got the e-collar on and which spaniel hasn't got the e-collar on. Three dogs, one's never had an e-collar, never need it, right? Because I trained it from day one, oh, not day one, I had this dog in at five months old, he was a nervous wreck. You wouldn't put an e-collar on a nervous wreck. But guess what? You can put an e-collar on a nervous dog. You can actually teach a dog to be with you and not be nervous with an e-collar. But if you've not studied it, you wouldn't know. But I don't need to put an e-collar on him because I just needed to work with him for a year and let him come out of himself and train him the way I train. My dogs want to be with me because they love me. When people watch my videos and they see the eye contact I've got and they see the control I've got, that's why they're not attacking me on these um, my YouTube site like in their masses because so many people have been told that I'm an evil dog trainer and I do nothing but beat dogs into submission and then they've seen the videos. When you've put up five and a half thousand videos, You've changed mindsets. And this is what that Robert does not realise. That Robert is not in the gundog world, so he doesn't know what's happened in the gundog world with that stupid woman, Tina McDowell. It's as simple as that, everybody. She has created a shitstorm, and because he is trying to create a shitstorm out of nothing, out of absolutely nothing, out of a disagreement about dog training, right? 
she's got on the bandwagon and she's creating a bigger a bigger um, back of followers to, for him because she's playing the victim and said, I've abused her. I think she'd like to be abused, really. I honestly believe that she would like to be abused because she just can't leave me alone. I think she likes to be abused. She wants to play the victim. But I've never actually abused her. I've asked her to go away and leave me alone. The same as I've asked Robert to go away and leave me alone. But they can't because what they do, they look at your videos and they're jealous. And they're jealous about the following you've got. And they're jealous about the people that, that trust you with their dogs. And what he's trying to do, he's trying to get people to not bring dogs to me for training. That is such a nasty, underhanded way of trying to ruin another man's livelihood, right? I've got overheads, I've got commitments, and this man wants to ruin my life and my business because I dared disagree with what he was saying and found it astonishing. I couldn't believe he went on a live feed and said what he said. And because I questioned it, he's taken the hump. And then he's ran off with loads of crazy women. It's all crazy women. If you go on his site, it's all crazy women. And I'm not sexist, but unfortunately, it's the truth. There's a lot of people out there who've got nothing better to do than follow people like Robert. Because Robert sells himself as he is. But in fact, if you see the real Robert, and you get to know the real Robert, you'll know exactly why I've distanced myself from the man. And wasn't willing to play his silly game. Because. I do not like smiling assassins. I do not like them. All I want to do is train dogs. That dog there. Is a dog that he said. That I put the collar on that dog. 127. 128. The E collar. And zapped the dog at 128. It is a total lie. It's a fabrication of the truth. I've come on publicly to say that because it's a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace to try and ruin a man's life, his business, his passion, and cause stress to his family with all the hate and the death threats that we're getting because of the frenzy that he's promoting because he lost an argument on the internet. How sad can people be? And yet, it's important that you watch this video instead of, if you want to make judgment about somebody, I've not gone out with these dogs and thought, today I'm going to give them no discipline at all because I want everybody to think that I'm a lovely person with dogs. No, I'm showing you two real problem dogs. Look at that. That dog came back then without even being told. Look what I do to him. Tap, tap, tap. Good lad. Good lad. There. Why? Because he made the freaking choice, you sad people. What you see is not what you always get. That's why Robert is a charlatan. He's an academic in his area of law, and he's lived off the back of that. But his sadness is shining through. And what I would suggest is, I would suggest everybody go onto his Facebook page and look at the hate that he's creating for me. And what you've got to understand is this. He's controlling that debate. Because if anyone puts anything up. That says hang on. I've known Chris Upton for. And Chris Upton's trained dogs for me. Or anything um, negative. Against Robert. Like leave this guy alone. This, guy, this guy's passionate in what he does. And he doesn't beat dogs. And this woman's not right in the head. And this woman's had a vendetta against him for seven years. And he's been found not guilty of everything. Robert's not sharing any of this. Robert already knows this because we've talked about it for hours on end about the bitterness and horrible people in the dog training world who go out of their way to sell an ideology at any price, rip people off, rip people off, turn people over. I actually agree with a lot of what Robert says. And yet, I'll never ever trust that man again. And I don't want to debate with him because I've seen his true colours. I, I was seeing his true colours with his comments in private. And that made me distance myself from the bloke. It wasn't, I didn't fall out with him. I didn't unfriend him. I just didn't debate with him. But he came on dictating to me on a regular basis that I'm not running my business right. And I'm not doing this and I'm not doing that. And I, I said to him, nice and simple, 
why don't you come up for come up to one of my training seminars i'll sort the training seminar out you can come up and do we'll pay you we'll pay you you can come up and show people how to train dogs you get results i'll pay you no problem i didn't say i want you to come and train me i said i'd love to watch you train because that's what good dog men do they watch other people train then he can make a comment about my training but in one minute he says i've only ever watched one of your videos and we've got proof because we played that i don't make judgment on anybody and now all of a sudden i'm an evil dog trainer that people shouldn't be taking dogs to me and he's trying to create a shit storm that's just so pathetic absolutely pathetic and people say to me you need to move on chris you need to not talk about it but you have to talk about it because you have to do damage limitation when these idiots are manipulating the truth the way they are now any anybody on my facebook site can see that yes i'm talking about it but i'm talking about it in a rational manner and people aren't being nasty and horrible about it people are just either not interested in it and they're only interested in the dog stuff or they listen to it and think well yeah i see his point well, i told you i was trying to bring the dog training world together and i meant it but i've come to the conclusion it's impossible because some people are so stuck in their ideology and their ways and their way of thinking anybody else who, who, who tries to question their judgment or anything like that instantly is against them well robert came into my life telling me that he didn't like the way i trained a dog on one video i didn't ask him to come into my life and tell me that did i t throw my toys out the pram and say f off robert you don't know what you're talking about i'm a i've been doing this for 30 years no i debated with him i debated with him like i debate with anybody when someone starts to dictate to me and be rude to me I don't have to put up with it. It's as simple as that. So look at this, look. You've been watching this video. You've been listening to me rambling on. What else can I say? The dog is learning to be a dog again and not try and take over. He's not fighting the other dogs like he was. He's learning because I've taught him in stages. I've taught him slowly but surely. Right, not surely. Slowly but surely. Here she comes. Here comes my little princess. She's getting old. She can't keep up like she used to. You know, she's lovely. She is. She's lovely. Hang on, I might have to edit here. Hang on, I might have to edit this bit. She, oh, I've turned the camera away, so you're all right. She don't like close-ups. Oh, she don't like close-ups. Secret Sue. She's secret Sue. Because guess what, everyone? Me and Sue are secret, really. We don't tell you everything about our lives. We don't go on and on and on about our lives. We tell you sometimes when things are a little bit shitty. And we tell you, you know, um, honestly about mental health because we've, we've got a daughter that's suffering for mental health and we know what it's like to be in that situation and be such worrying parents we are we are family people our family come first um i love this job i have a passion for this job and if people think they can destroy it by rubbishing me and think i'm not going to stand up and defend myself they've got another thing coming but what they don't realize is because of the rumors out there and and the crap that they spread they think i'm going to attack everybody in a vicious, nasty way, who go after me. I, I approach things in the way I see fit. And if I decide I want to be a bit more assertive, I can be. But guess what? I've learned over the years, you can't win battles by being a bitch. You can't win battles by being over-bullying to people. Because you come across as the bully, even though they are trying to ruin your life, they play the victim. So what I've learned is simple. Let people show their true colours. Let pe That's not racist, by the way. Be very careful. Let people show their true colours. Right? See what I'm saying? I have to be so careful on every word because some people get triggered on every word that you say. And what I'm saying is, let them show you their work, then judge them. Anybody can talk about it, but can people actually show it? Three dogs having a wonderful time. Have I been doing sit, stay, come here, go left, go right, go back? No. What I'm doing is I'm teaching him we have an area you can go to and have fun. But there is ground rules. And if I ask you to come back, you come back. If I give you freedom, I give you freedom. If you were that dog, who would you rather be with? The person who's doing non-stop obedience training with you. Sit, stay, wait, fetch that, don't do this, don't do that. Or would you prefer to be with someone who gives you freedom? But you know there's rules and boundaries. I know who I'd rather be with. And that's exactly what it was like at school for me. 
because when I was at school as a youngster, we were just moving from that period of real dominant teachers who would check your fingernails and hit you with a ruler to teachers that would stand you in a waste paper bin and put a dunce's hat on you and throw, throw, throw the chalkboard at you because you were dyslexic. They didn't know you were dyslexic, so I'm not, I'm not griping back and saying, oh, I was a victim, I was a victim, I, 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 I'm the person I am for what I've been treated. No, what I don't, don't like, I can't stand bullies. I can't stand bullies. And dogs, dogs learn at different stages. Dogs learn at different stages, and Dougie is a fine example of a dog that needs time to mature. Am I putting pressure on him? Yes. Am I putting enough pressure on him to get something out of him? Yes. I, I, have I destroyed him? No friggin' way. I will challenge anybody. I can take this dog now and I can have a nice time with him knowing that I can control him and I'm teaching him and look what he's leading, look. But guess what? He's not doing anything wrong, is he? He's learning through association that there's nothing wrong with being away from me. But when I ask you to come back, you come back. Have we got a long way to go with Dougie? Yes, we have. It's a long-term project, but we first need to set a foundation. And that's what is so important, setting the foundation with that dog. And like I said, some kids struggled at school like I did. Then you start to educate yourself. Then you start to realize how important education is. But at the time, I couldn't cope with it in that environment as a child. As you get older, you change sometimes, and sometimes you don't. Just because you can't read or can't write does not mean you're thick. And when people start saying things like that, it just shows the mentality of them. And that's what this gun dog trainer, this not, he's not even a gun dog trainer, is he? He's a pet trainer. He's trying to tell people that I'm thick and I don't know what I'm talking about. So what I'm doing is I'm actually showing you I'm a lot more sensible than you can think. 